And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. Welcome to my channel where we talk about anything related to comic books. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the Spider-Man 2099 Omnibus. Now, I don't usually buy Omnibuses, but this was a very special case, since I love this character and as soon as I heard that there will be a collected edition with the whole Peter David run, I really wanted to get it, so if you have been watching my videos for some time now, you probably you probably know that I had even pre-ordered it and it arrived a few days ago. So this is a very recent book, It's it was released uh, on May 22nd. Uh, it retails for $150 and it has 1384 pages and yes it's quite big even for an omnibus but it's soaking beautiful soaking is like the f word of the future yeah it's soaking beautiful soaking amazing soaking awesome soaking everything so let's take a look at the cover here we have uh, a cover drawn by uh, rick leonardi and al williamson uh, which is actually the cover of Spider-Man 2099 number one, as you can see here. Oh, and I almost forgot. This is the direct market cover. The standard, the standard edition cover is this one. And on the spine, oh my God, it's quite heavy. On the spine, we can see the Marvel Omnibus logo and Spider-Man 2099 Volume 1 and yes there will be a Volume 2 uh, coming out this fall uh, yes this fall uh, in October I think so here in the back cover we can see every uh, issue here all the covers actually of the issues uh, collected here so this omnibus collects Spider-Man 2099 1 through 46, which is the whole Peter David run. This hasn't been collected anywhere else. There were some trade paperbacks a few years ago, but they didn't collect the whole run. So yes, now we have Spider-Man 2099 1 through 46, plus the annual and the special. There's also the Spider-Man 2099 meets Spider-Man one shot in which the Spider-Man of the past and the future meet. And we also have some issues from other 2099 titles. We have Ravage 2099-15, X-Men 2099-5, uh, Doom 2099-14, Pinesir 2099-13. These issues are part of a crossover between all the, spy all the 2099 heroes of the time, so you need all of them to fully understand the whole story and here we have the creative team written by Peter David with um, Eddington, Cavana, uh, many others, the too many names, I, keep, I won't read them all, just the main ones and illustrated by Ricky Leonardi, Kelly Jones, Tom Granberg, Ron Lim and many many others. So now we can remove the dust jacket and take a look at how it looks at how it looks inside. So as I said, this has more than a thousand and three hundred pages. So as you can see, it's very very large. This cover here is actually from Spiderman Twenty Nine Nine Number Two. It's the last page. So this one the spine is similar to the spine in the dust jacket but the image is a bit different and here we have Miguel O'Hara when he first became Spider-Man 2099 and this is the last page from Spider-Man 2099 number one And if we go inside, 
we'll see. This Spider-Man 29. So this is the whole creative team, and you can understand why I didn't uh, say all the names before. Many, many people con uh, contributed in this one. And here are the context, the contents. And from this point on, the stories start. The first issue. But we'll talk about the stories later. Now let's go all the way to the back of this book. In the end, we have the extras. So we have many, many, many articles from Marvel Aids. And a few covers. More articles, more articles. They've done an amazing job uh, with the extras too. They've included many articles. Like, I think these these are all the articles that were ever, ever written about the 2099 books. Okay, maybe not all of them, but still many. Ah, so this is a promotional comic. Uh, another cover. Another article, as I said, many articles here. And I think that there will also be a Marvel Age omnibus at some point. Not sure though. We also have an article from Marvel Spotlight. More articles, more articles. Some posters. Pinups, trading cards, posters, behind the scenes, more articles. Oh, and I'd like to add that the or the original design for Venom 2099 uh, is now used in Carnage 2099 in the uh, current uh, Spider-Man 2099 series, uh, Spider-Man 2099 Dark Genesis. Which is like maximum carnage 2099, basically. Um, so, yes, uh, in that series, carnage is lo really looks like this. So, I'm pretty sure it was inspired by uh, Venom's original design. <laughs> oh, and here we have the covers of the first collected editions with Spider Man 2099. The uh, five were released. Uh, but they didn't uh, cover the whole run. So this one, two, volume three, front and back cover. And volume four and volume five. Uh, and these are the co combined covers of the Fall of the Hammer crossover, the one I talked about earlier, with all the 2099 characters at the time. And I think Ravitz 2099 was written by Stan Lee himself. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it had connecting covers. And I didn't know about this either. I didn't know about this either. Uh, so we have more connecting covers here. This was probably for 2099 One Nation Under Doom. Another 2099 event. So these are basically all the extras. Uh, sorry. And I think that now we can talk about the stories. So I can't talk about all the stories here, of course, since it's not just one story. Uh, it has the whole sucking run. So I'll just give you some, just some basic information about Spider-Man 2099. 
Uh, yeah, and here, uh, the first story in this omnibus is, of course, his origin. In Spider-Man 1. Uh, although many of twenty nine Sp of Spider-Man 29's villains were similar to uh, Spider-Man to Spider-Man's villains, and I mean the Spider-Man of the present, uh, he also had many original villains and not just future versions of current villains, like uh, Venture, uh, the Specialist. The public eye. But there was, uh, I think, uh, Vulture 2099. Wait, let me find. Here, and I think he was cannibal or something. So yes, there are many uh, villains that were inspired by uh, Spidey's uh, current villains. And here uh, we have the crossover, uh, the fall of the hammer. Which starts with um, Spider Man 2099 16 and it continues with Rabbits, I think. Yeah, it continues with Rabbits 2099 15. So, Follow the Hammer was basically like the return of the Asgardian gods, um, which were which had disappeared or something and there were uh, and there was this cult the thorites who believed that they were that they would come back and so we got to see thor 2099 loki hella balder so fourth hammer part three is an x-men 2099 number five uh, then doom 2099 number 14 and finally, it concludes in Punisher 2099, uh, 13, I think. Anyways. So. Ah, yes. There were, there were also these um, secondary stories that were about uh, Miguel O'Hara as a kid. Young, young Miguel O'Hara. Here, here we have the Spider-Man 2099 annual. Unfortunately, there wasn't any other annual, but there was special. Oh, and here we have Strains 2099. Not Doctor Strains, but still uh, some sort of sor sorcerer. Oh, and of course, we have Venom 2099. And he also had some variant covers of his own. Yeah, see. Uh, Venom was really popular back in the 90s, and that's why he has his own series. Well, not actually series, but more like a series of limited series. So there had to be uh, a Venom 2099. So this is like 
uh, the cover of Amazing Fantasy 15. Again, Vulture. And a few issues later, we have a Goblin 2099. That goblin's gonna get you, Spidey. Beware. Oh, and the special is here, I think. Yeah. So this is a Spider-Man 2099 special. It's had three stories. And here we have Spider-Man 2099 meets Spider-Man. So Spider-Man 2099 gets to fight Venom of the present and Spider-Man of the present gets to fight Vulture 2099 I don't remember that one, ah, here So this is uh, number 2099 I think Name or Namor, I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly. And Spider-Man 2099-46, the last issue. So, uh, back then, they thought it was a good idea to just discontinue all the 2099 uh, titles and just release one book, um, uh, 2099 World of Tomorrow. But, of course, this wasn't the good decision and it didn't go well so 2099 was cancelled entirely but thankfully Spider-Man 2099 returned a few years later with two more uh, volumes and the one shot so we still Got 2099 content, uh, and this basically it. This was the Spider Man 2099 omnibus. So let's put that dust jacket back on. Now, do I recommend this one? Absolute shockingly. It's a must read and a must have for all the 2099 fans out there. And it has the whole Peter David run, all the 46 issues, the Fold of Hammer crossover, the special, the annual, the one shot with uh, the two Spider Man. What else do you want? <laughs> it's just pure awesomeness. Most of the stories here are amazing, but generally, it's it's something that, that all uh, fans should have if they can afford it, of course. But I assure you that this will be a great addition to your collection. Well, guys, this was today's video. Tell me in the comments if you're thinking of getting this now or if you have this already. And tell me what you think about it. If you enjoyed this video, you can support me by subscribing, clicking the like button, and allowing all notifications. So, until the next time, goodbye, true believers. This was Greens.